good evening today we shall be discussing case number 5 in our ecg series the title of which is neglect me not uh, so please like share and subscribe so this is a story of a 94 year old male presenting with chest pain for one hour he was radiating to throat at around 1 am in the night which uh, forced him to wake up from sleep now uh, this is his ecg you can pause the video if required and uh, try to assess the ecg so uh, as usual we have an elderly man presenting with chest pain now there are several things which point to a sinister etiology when you analyze the history one the chest pain which is radiating to the throat if a patient comes to you with chest pain radiating to the neck it is almost always considered to be very significant and indicates a cardiac etiology two the chest pain forced him to wake up from sleep when you have a chest pain which forces you to wake up from sleep and the patient cannot subsequently go back to sleep during the because of the chest pain it indicates a cardiac etiology ask the patient what he did did he again try to lie down or did he uh, was he forced to sit up if the chest pain forces him to sit up it again indicates a cardiac etiology similar to nitrates when you sit up there is pooling of blood in the extremities thereby decrease venous return thereby decrease over preload and thereby decrease workload on the heart so a chest pain which uh, occurs at night which wakens the patient from sleep prevents him from subsequently sleep sleeping and makes him sit up in the bed these are these are all features suggestive of a cardiac pain along with radiation to the throat now one good ecg deserves another so if you have never look at an ecg in isolation always take serial ecgs so an ecg was taken one hour later and now you know the diagnosis you can see st elevation in 2 3 V two, V one, V two, V three, V four, V five, and V six, and uh, a bit of ST elevation in uh, lead two, one AVL. So this indicates an extensive anterior wall MI. Now let's go back to the initial ECG. Have a look at the ECG once more and try to find out: Is there anything in the ECG which suggests a sinister etiology? What have we missed? so uh, before we go to the next slide can you just name the waves of the electrocardiogram so once you have named them we shall go to the next ecg you can see there are there is mark there is u wave inversions in v3 v4 v5 now u is normally a positive polarity wave so you can see there are clear cut u wave inversions in v3 v4 and v5 now uh, again the question was asked what are the names of the waves of the ecg if you have most of you will name it as p q r s and t we generally neglect neglect the u wave however in this case neglect the u wave at your own peril the u wave the neglected wave you can see that the u wave occurs after the t wave and this is the usually the same polarity of that as the t wave it is more clearly seen in bradycardia and uh, when there is tachycardia the u wave fuses and merges with the t wave so you can often not see it and it's usually seen in the mid precordial leads around v2 v3 v4 so u wave is a low amplitude usually positive monophasic deflection after the t wave usually with the same vector as that of the t wave so t waves are positive this is also usually positive and if t wave is negative this also becomes negative so we are not clear exactly why the u wave occurs some say it is due to repolarization of the purkinje fibers and some say is due to the mechanical rebound of myocardium at the end of systole so the small wave less than 2 mm and is less than 25% of the height of the t waves so you have a tall t wave you can have a tall u wave also so what are the implications of a negative u wave a negative u wave other than lead avia 3 or avf implies ischemic heart disease so in a patient with acute chest pain if you have a negative u wave in the precordial leads you consider it as a significant lad lesion until proven otherwise so patient presenting with chest pain you see a negative u wave in leads v1 to v6 you consider it as the patient having significant lad disease it's poor sensitivity but it has high specificity uh, interestingly if these patients develop an anterior wall mi they have smaller infarcts lesser st elevation better collateral circulation 
and larger amount of stunt but myocardial but viable myocardium so a negative u wave signifies significant lad stenosis in a patient with acute chest pain but if he develops an mi they usually tend to have smaller mis you're not exactly clear to why the etiology is but this is just an observation Similarly, a prominent negative U wave in all inferior leads, that is 2, 3, and ABF in the presence of chest pain may be due to inferior ischemia. Again, this is not as validated as that of the anterior leads, but is certainly it has been uh, studied. Exercise induced U wave inversion, that is uh, in a treadmill, is highly predictive of CAD. Now, in a treadmill, we are all bothered about the ST depression. But studies have shown that a negative U wave in precordial leads during exercise has a higher specificity and positive predictive value for ischemia than ST depression. So when you do a treadmill, you focus on the ST depression and the degree to which it, it depresses. But actually, the U wave has a better specificity and better positive predictive value for coronary stenosis than ST depression itself. This is an article which came in the Indian Pacing uh, Electrophysiology Journal. So the main author was M.P. Girish. So you can see that there are prominent U waves inversions in V3, V4, and V5. There's a significant, maybe around a 90% proximal LAD lesion. You can see this is the septal. What is proximal to the septal becomes the proximal LAD. So you can say 90% lesion in the proximal LAD, which is subsequently stented. So this might be reported as an apparently normal ECG, but on careful examination, you can see that there is negative T waves. So what do you learn from this case? One ECG deserves another. An ECG should never be reported in isolation. You should always take into consideration the clinical condition of the patient. And you should always repeat the ECG and compare it to a previous ECG. So one ECG deserves another. Two, CAD can present with normal or apparently normal ECG. You can have a significant coronary lesion. In fact, there are people who are being sent for bypass and the ECG is perfectly normal or they may have apparently normal ECGs. Like in this case, you might miss a subtle finding like a negative T wave. Three, this is very important. Do not discharge a patient with chest pain at night. If a patient comes to you with chest pain at night, you consider that chest pain as significant. Hundreds of litigations have been reported because patients with chest pain at night have been treated as gastritis and sent, and sent home. So never send a patient with chest pain at night. You can treat them overnight, show them to a consultant or specialist if required, do investigations and discharge the patient in the morning, but never discharge a patient with chest pain at night. Last is in a patient with acute chest pain, a negative U wave in the precord leads represents a coronary lesion until otherwise proven. So thank you. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified when a new video uploads.